All right. Um, I'm Ryan Dagg, uh, lead front end engineer at Heroku. Been at Heroku for almost two years. Been doing Ember for about three months. Um, I think you all know. I think you all know Yehuda. Um, I've been at Heroku for three months and doing Ember for ten years. Since, since, yeah. So I've been working closely with Yehuda since he um, joined. So, let's see here. We're going to be talking about state of front end deployments and deploying the back end the easy way. Um, this is how we'd like things to work. One, you build your app, you follow your instructions, and you don't think about the deployment. And then you push. No step four. Um, this was actually my first experience deploying to a server. Um, I was working locally, git push Heroku main. I was in a dev boot camp and I did not know which way was up and I s still got this to work and it was, it's the dream. It's what we were hoping for. Um, yeah, this is basically when people say, what's a PaaS? That's basically what they're talking about. Uh, things got obscured since then, but we were just saying, you, you didn't think about deployments when you made your app, and then it worked. You didn't, you didn't have to think about it when you pushed either. That's all, that's all I have to say about that slide. Yeah, got it. And then how, does this, how exactly does this work? Right? Follow your framework's instructions and don't think about deployment. That's, that's a big jump. It's a leap. Um, all right. Why should it work? Your local development environment doesn't have that much in common with your production environment. Why should we expect to be able to blindly write an app locally and then magically have it work in production? Well, most modern framework, practi framework practices are already compatible with deployment environments, which helps quite a bit. Oops. Too much to cover here, but for the purpose of this talk, config doc. One moment. Um, config, config vars have largely been standardized. Um, but in 2010, that wasn't entirely true. Enter the 12 factor app. In 2010, the 12 factor app philosophy defined framework agnostic best practices that allowed us to, that are not coupled with the development environment. Um, one of the ways that 12 factor changed the industry, that was iconic for me at least, was by getting people to stop hard coding port 3000 and instead use the port NVAR. It was actually also in that bootcamp, the first NVAR I had ever encountered. Um, as an example, right, just, I like code personally. Uh, parameterized API host variable here that you're pulling from your environment. Not terribly, like, uh, something you think about too much right now, but we'll get into why this is important. Um, especially, right, compared to hard coding, which I think was a standard for quite some time. Uh, if, you're, yeah, if your server communicates with another service, right, this is the way to do this. Uh, and you'll get different behavior in development, staging, and production. Uh, Okay, so that's cool. That's basically the story of Heroku. Like a lot of people experienced it through boot camps. It's also my experience. You like, you built your app. You didn't even know what deployment was. You just got it working. You get pushed. Everything, uh, everything worked, and like you didn't think about it. Um, but like ten years after all that happened, and after we did all that standardization, it's still it's totally normal to make a web app that has a front end directory and a back end directory. Like I do it all the time. And it's also pretty easy to get it working locally. But today, like on any platform, it's really painful to deploy that. Now, you might be thinking, like, is that right? Like, should people do something when they deploy? It seems like it's easy. But actually, it actually is hard. And here's why. So if you want to use any front end framework you want, like Ember, and you want to use the best back end framework for the job, which is probably not like whatever your framework told you to use or express, it's like you want to use Rails or Django or something, then, and you just want to build your app the normal way and not like go to your platform's website and have them tell you exactly what you need to do to build your application. So you just want to like go to the Ember website, follow the instructions and get it working. Like again, this is just a dream. Um, then you're just kind of out of luck. 
And that's not to say there's no options at all. You could, you could use a front-end framework that has a built-in back-end story. Alternatively, you could let your platform tell you how to write your app. And either of these approaches totally works. Both of those are things people do. You've probably done them. Totally works. But it's not quite what we want. Um, remember how we said it was like really awesome to build your app locally, get it working locally, and then not worry about deployment until you're ready? I don't want my deployment platform to tell me how to write my backend. I want to pick the best tool for the job. And this sounds like a cool story, and I'm here like it's a marketing pitch. I'm telling you like you should use Heroku. But you probably actually don't deploy your Ember app to Heroku. So like, why is that? So it's actually, the answer is subtle. So remember how we said earlier that the 12-factor app made off-the-shelf backend frameworks compatible with deploying to production? So that meant like we were able to use the 12-factor manifesto to get people's documentation to, not, to stop hard-coding ports, stop hard-coding other configuration. Um, the problem is that this doesn't solve the problem for front-end. So we said that 12-factor app standardized configure, as Ryan said that, so we can stop, avoid hard-coding URLs and let our code adapt to different environments. That is awesome, and it was a big advance in the deployment state of the art. But, unfortunately, the 12-factor app went further than standardizing config bars. It, it also says that config variables are always provided to the application at runtime. And bear with me for a second here. The problem is that this bakes in the fact that backend apps get their config variables through runtime environment variables into the whole design of, of config bars. So the thing that Ryan showed earlier where he's like, you should just write API URL, like that problem also exists on the front end. But this solution, which is like you're running inside of a container and I've provided to you as an environment variable, does not work on the front end. Um, front end applications need the config bars to be included in the build. Like now that I said this, this should be obvious, right? It's like ends up in the actual payload that you put on your CDN. And this detail is not fundamental. Like if you go read the 12-factor manifesto, there's no actual reason why this is what the 12-factor manifesto says, but it actually is what the 12-factor manifesto says, and it is also what Heroku does, um, and therefore like what everyone else does. So when I started at Heroku in November, like one of my priorities was just to try to dig into like why I am not using Heroku to deploy most of my Ember apps. And it was good timing because there's a bunch of architects at Heroku that were getting ready to start thinking about refreshing the 12-factor app. And that gave me a good opportunity to help think through the problem. Like, like, it's always good. There's a bunch of people thinking about something. It's not like a product discussion. It's a thinking conversation. That was a good place for me to be like, I don't really know anything about this company, but like, something seems wrong here. Um, and I also really wanted to make sure that like our community, like front-end applications are well-represented because it just would be really easy for the same mistake that like, allowed front-end applications to not get the right behavior to just like keep following through the refresh. Like that wasn't what people had in mind. And so I wanted to try to represent front-end in the conversation. And like this is basically the North Star that like every conversation I've had in that working group, like what I say is you basically want to have this repo that I showed earlier with a front-end and back-end directory. You would like to be able to get push the repo to Heroku. Like you would like the backend directory to be detected like the same way that any other backend is. Like the, the, that's the part of the story we know and love and like you've probably done. Now we also would want the front end directory to be detected by a front end build pack. And that, that has to solve the problem of baking the config vars in, right? And what that would end up meaning is that the thing we said before where we could use whatever front end framework we want, whatever back end framework we want and have it get deployed seamlessly, the thing that worked in 2011 for back end like, would actually work for front end and it would exist in the world, which is nice. Um, unfortunately, we still actually do need to fix that problem and that, that's why we're thinking about it. Um, and I don't have much else to say here other than like, we are thinking about it, there's a reason we're thinking about it and I think we are gonna, I think um, Vish, our chief architect, already announced that Heroku is gonna be leading an effort to revitalize the 12-factor app. And I like, I wanna ask the people in this room and like any front-end people, like be, be around and try to help because little weird things like this actually are the reason why we end up not getting what we need. And it's very subtle. It's not like something that people notice. So definitely when you see people announcing it, like don't think, oh, that's probably not for me. That would like keep the problem going, try to participate. And I think there's a good opportunity for us to like make a good thing happen. Be great. Okay, thank you.